so remember, like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video, and remember to tell me what your list of at least the top 10 or top 20 greatest are. So we finished off at number 17, which is Million Dollar Man. As I, as I was saying, he, he really is, I mean, as I said, a lot of people blow a lot of smoke up a lot of people's ass, like, I'm sorry, you know, people like Ric Flair about how, like, great their matches were and whatever, and they were enjoyable within the context of that time, but there were very few who were enjoyable within the context of our time, where, like, there's more explosive moves and there's more, do you know what I mean? There's more wrestling moves these days, to be quite frank, rather than punches and rest holds and um, you know, and, 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 and dancing around the ring, um, you know, prancing around the ring, like going, you know, like charging up or whatever it, uh, they were doing, um, uh, before I would say Shawn Michaels really revolutionized wrestling, but Million Dollar Man is one of those rare few, um, that, that was kick-ass in the ring, he really was, a, he really was kick-ass in the ring, and you can enjoy his matches. Um, a, a lot of them anyway um, and yeah just a great character so uh, finish off with him um, we go the next to number 16 which is Mr. Perfect um, Mr. Perfect I just think one of the great characters um, in WWE history great as a baby face great as a as a heel um, very technically sound in the ring uh, very smooth, slick in the ring, uh, had great in-ring psychology, uh, loved his promos, they were like really, really little funny skits that he did about being absolutely perfect, and to be quite frank, um, as far as I'm concerned, he was, <laughs> he really, really was, I, I love Mr. Perfect, um, what a great character, uh, so he's number 16, and I think... I think he's number 16 on <laughs> the list, in, and, and I said I think that was a perfect spot for him. Um, he's either 16 or 17 um, in the actual list by the WWE, um, and I thought that was a perfect spot for him. Uh, simply because, you know, he, he never really got to the level that he should have. He was never given the chance to really run with it and go, go for the World Championship. I think he should have been. Um, he really, really should have been because he was such a great... I was surprised that, you know, like when I found that out, I, m I remember a few years ago when I found that out and I was getting back into wrestling and I was like, oh, you are, you still love Mr. Perfect. Uh, and I just found out he'd never been a world champion. He'd just been an intercontinental champion. So he was never given that chance to really push the envelope, which I think if he had have been, he, they could have got a lot more out of the character, but as it stands, he is an icon of that era, anyone who watched wrestling during that era remembers Mr. Perfect, um, you, even if you hated him as a kid, you kind of ended up having a cheeky smile because of, of what he was doing in the ring, you know, um, uh, he's cheating and etc., um, and the fact he was really perfect, that was what pissed you off as a kid. He was a heel, and he had this gimmick that he was perfect, but he really, really was. <laughs> so that was great. Uh, number 15, which is Luthers, um, creator of a number of different moves, including, obviously, the most famous, the Luthers Press. Um, really, if you have that kind of influence, I think you should be on the list. Um, you know, uh, to have the influence of having moves and whatever awards and etc. named after you because you were so influential at your time. Even though I don't know much about his career, it, it's quite clear he should be on the list. Um, number 14, Triple H, a man that you know that I absolutely hate loads. Um, he makes my blood boil, but he deserves to be on the list, and he deserves to be in the top 25, I think. Why? Because he is, to some extent, an icon. Anyone who likes The Rock knows who, who Triple H is. Anyone who watched the, the Rock in WWE knows who Triple H is. They know because of these feuds with Triple H. Basically, um, other superstars who were great made Triple H into a superstar because he was always working and feuding with them. So people came to know him as one of the great heels of the Attitude Era. 
Um, and, you know, although I didn't find him very entertaining, um, obviously some people did, but, like, uh, I, I personally didn't find him entertaining at all. I, I thought he had the kind of heel heat that was kind of like, please get off my television, I, I really don't like you. And the reason we wanted The Rock to win is because we knew he was so much more of a better entertainer or the reason we wanted Stone Cold, or the reason we wanted Mick Foley to win, is because we knew they were so much better and superior entertainers. Um, so yeah, I, I just... With, with, with Triple H, he just has that place in history, because he was, he, was, he was one of the best, even in his mediocrity at the time, he still was one of the best of that generation. He was part of DX, which is obviously has a huge, huge following and probably is blown way out of proportion because he's behind all the marketing um, nowadays and he's married to the um, to Stephanie and the business. So uh, I didn't find the X that entertaining. I didn't the suck it. I, 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 you know, you've got Stone Cold Steve Austin there. You know, drinking a Steve Weiser. Um, you know, flipping people the birds, stunning, doing some of the best promos ever. You thump your Bible, you told me of you thump your Bible, you told me your psalms well of Austin three six you know, people cutting promos like that. And then uh, you know, people like the rock, you know, cutting awesome promos every single week, calling people, you know, um women with these big fat bearded female pigs you know um and then you've got some guy going so cute. So cute. I, I mean it was like i i thought it was childish as hell and they said the same thing every week it wasn't it wasn't different it was the same stick every week people talk about the rock being repetitive fuck dx were the most and the new age outlaws were the most repetitive fucking crew ever you know like it was bullshit um i'm sorry i thought the most entertaining person in dx was Shawn michaels i thought the rest of it could go to shit but um triple h has to be there because he just was there basically <laughs> at a time where things blew up and therefore he is an icon of the industry i don't know that's the best way i can explain it number 13 is sting um Sting is, is brilliant. I love Sting. Um, you know, uh, the man who never sold out um, is an icon in the business because of that. But also, you know, he, he was a great baby face throughout his career. You know, like at first the bleach blonde hair, strong, powerful, exciting, um, you know, kind of almost mainstream 80s star baby face. And then he went into the dark kind of like side crow style against the you know and, and really played upon his image there you know like people had turned against sting but he'd always remained faithful and everyone kind of was drawn back in and that's what i call a genius when it comes to wrestling and drawing wood because it's all about capturing the audience you know and and telling a story to the audience and there was no greater story of you know when sting turned into the other crow like character so he he needs to be he could be higher, to be honest. Um, he needs to be on the uh, top um, list. Um, I need top 50 list. Um, by the way, I should say Chris Benoit is not on this list. Um, I don't put murderers on my list, um, unfortunately. Uh, I'm sorry, Chris Benoit fans. If you're waiting, you can now switch off because I'm not putting that guy on my list. I don't even think he... I honestly... I think he deserves it as a technical wrestler. But, like, the way Chris Benoit fans go on is, like, he was, you know, like, somebody who was really deeply connected. I don't think he was that great to feel like you can forgive him for murdering people. But to even forgive him for, you know, attempted murder, <laughs> I don't think he's that great. But anyway, he was great. But I, I'm not putting him on the list. And I understand why WWE don't put him on the list either. I'm sorry, guys. Um, if he didn't do that, he would be high up. He'd be in the 20s. Um, so we've got up to Sting. Number 12 is Bret Hart. Best there is, best there was, the best there ever will be. What an iconic line in wrestling. Um, 
I love Bret Hart. I really do. I, I mean, I don't think he's one of the five greatest of all time. I'm sorry. Like the WWE put him on. Uh, but I really do. I think he, he had such heart. I mean, no pun intended. And it was so real when he was in the ring. And every all the kids really felt it. And even as an adult, he's one of those guys who, even though he appealed to you as a kid, you know the way you kind of think Hulk Hogan is a bit corny now? Um, like a bit, like a tiny bit corny? Bret Hart somehow just doesn't get that. Like even when you grow up, you still see him as a kind of like a guy with heart, you know, like the reason he put the glasses over the kid's head was genuine. It wasn't like some kind of publicity. He genuinely felt like a hero like and, and that he should hold himself up like a hero and then he was just technically so sound in the ring he was brilliant in the ring like all of his matches not all of it it's overblown by the way about his matches but his greatest matches are fantastic fantastic flawless matches um uh i think especially when he came into the attitude era um, and was feuding, um, you know, just all of that period, he, he, he really, you know, like, he, he, he developed his style from before, um, to, you know, which was always a, a cut above the rest anyway, and then he developed it to um, being even better in the Attitude Era, and, uh, you know, had some great, great matches. This match with Stone Cold Steve Austin is one of the best matches of all time, it's simple as it really is. Um, what I have to say about Bret Hart, um, the, the reason I put him so low is because despite everything, he wasn't as big a draw as people like Hulk Hogan or Stone Cold Steve Austin, etc. Even, I don't even think Triple H, to be honest, because when you think about it, I mean, he was a big draw with Stone Cold versus Bret Hart, actually, that was a big draw. But when you think about it, during the period where he was the man, when he was the guy, WWE went down. They went down from Hulk Hogan and then rose again in the Attitude Era with Stone Cold taking the, uh, taking the mantle. Um, so that is why I don't think he is as big an icon. I think wrestling fans know him and maybe has a bit, bit, more um, mainstream appeal than, than than a lot of wrestlers, but not quite as much as Bret Hart or Stone Cold or The Rock. Um, so that is why, I, you know, I put him there. He wasn't as good on the mic as those guys, although he was quite good, I think. But, um, yeah. Bret Hart, you know, I love the guy, so I, I'm not going to, you know, I just have to tell the truth about it. Uh, 11 is Bruno San Martino, one of the biggest draws of all time. Um, really, um, uh, just an absolute hero for for the period of time where he was champion for. I don't know was it was it five years. I I can't remember the amount of years now. Um, but he he's just one of the at the time the biggest hottest thing in wrestling. It was slightly before wrestling blew up, but nonetheless, he sold out every stadium he went to, um, big, massive, humongous draw, um, and that's why he's on here, basically, um, he, he, he was just, you know, he was everyone's hero at the time, and they still remember till today. Um, number 10 is Kurt Angle, uh, greatest wrestler pretty much of all time, um, in terms of WWE uh, wrestler, one of the most athletic, gifted wrestlers of all time. Um, can do things that other wrestlers his size just cannot do, much like Brock Lesnar. Um, the difference between him himself and Brock Lesnar is one, he's a bigger draw, um, and then secondly, I mean, would be if he went back to WWE, but um, and 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 was before. Uh, he was one of the biggest draws um, for one year during a period when Stone Cold and Rock were were still in the business. That's how big um, Kurt Angle was. Um, just to let you guys know. Um, plus, uh, he he he's really he's really good on the. This is what separates him from all the rest. 
usually people are either one or the other. They, 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 they're good in ring, or they, you know, they, 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 they've got something that makes them captivating um, in terms of their persona. It, rarely have you had a marriage of the two. Um, there is another gifted individual that is coming up, which I will mention later uh, in terms of this. But rarely have you had such a marriage of the two humorous, really funny, one of the funniest guys I've seen in the ring, full stop, um, you know, great promo cutter, five star classic matches, even great high flyer, I mean the guy had it all, he was a genetic freak in terms of what he was able to do in, uh, in, in ring and what he's still able to do in ring, um, I really think he's one of the biggest you know, like wrestlers, wrestlers of all time, you know, um, and I think he's a bit of an icon, he's done movies, you know, um, he's been in the mainstream, I think he's probably one of the more mainstream wrestlers, I think he's probably more mainstream than Triple H, I really do, I, I mean, as I said, he's been in bigger movies than Triple H, um, more mainstream movies than Triple H, um, so yeah, I think uh, Kurt Angle is really the real deal. I mean, I, I could put him up higher in my own personal list, but um, for number 10 is Kurt Angle. Um, number 9 is Mick Foley. Uh, Mick Foley is, again, one of these guys uh, just put his whole heart and soul into the business and, um, you know, m and and he has so many memorable moments in the wrestling industry. This is the guy who saw sees Jimmy Snooker come off the top um, of a cage uh, and soar in the air and uh, many years later um, puts his life on the fucking line by flying off a hell in a cell cage which is several uh, you know feet higher um, into a table you know just to create a memory for the fans and you know you think a crazy guy like this hmm, can't be that intelligent can't be you know a great talker can't be like no nope. Guy's an author, one of the most mainstream wrestlers. People do documentaries on him um, because, you know, he, of just how, you know, an amazing. I think really probably one of the most um, charismatic um, WWE superstars with one of the most interesting stories uh, of all time, in, including the Rock and Stone Cold Steve Austin, um, and you know he was just that every man that, you know, he's tried to be a villain, but we could just never take him seriously because we, we knew he was just a nice guy, a good guy. He was putting his, it, putting it all on the line for us. And, um, you know, he was funny with the rock and sock connection. I think he did some brilliant skits with him. Um, he's a hardcore legend, and he deserves to be in the top ten, full stop. Um, really, really uh, great. Uh, so that's number nine, Mick Foley. Uh, <clears throat> uh, we've got uh, number eight, which is Shawn Michaels. I don't like him. I, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie, but um, I, it's not like I don't like him. Like I don't like Triple H. Not like him, but I know he was a game player. I know he was a, a politicker. I know he was all of that in the back. You know, didn't want um, to lose to Stone Cold Steve Austin. Um, but what can we say? He connected with the audience like nobody else, and even myself before I knew all the stuff. You know, it's not like Triple H where I don't like him on screen, and I think he politics because he doesn't have the charisma <laughs> or, or or the in ring ability to make it by himself. Shawn Michaels is somebody who does have that ability, um, who really could have just been a nice guy. But decided to be an asshole instead um, because he really does have that charisma he does have that ability he really is a phenomena um, when it comes to his in-ring work no one can touch him I mean no one can touch the excitement um, you know and, 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 and the athletic ability um, in a Shawn Michaels match apart from maybe Kurt Angle or Brock Lesnar um, that kind of athleticism is unheard of um, you know, uh, and yeah, I think he's 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 a really 
fantastic in terms of that sense, but he's somebody that I personally uh, just have a distaste for um, in terms of the way he acts in the background. Um, although I've always found him entertaining, I thought he was the most entertaining part of DX. Um, I don't think I think he's overrated on the mic personally, but apart from that, that's it. Number seven, Rip Flair. Um, I, I don't know what to say. Greatest heel of all time. Really, really the greatest. If I said the greatest heel of all time before, I'm sorry. That is the greatest heel of all time. Um, really revolutionised the whole way of being a heel, and his in-ring performance is brilliant in terms of being a heel. Um, yeah, just one of the icons of the industry. Number six is The Undertaker, um, The Dead Man, and, um, you know, the greatest gimmick in wrestling history, um, no doubt about it. Um, there's been no gimmick that has endured uh, for as long. And I, you know, let me just talk about the gimmick for a second. First of all, the gimmick is something that is so memorable, is so basic it's so you know it's just a great great gimmick and he plays it so well and he looks so good as it but then there's also the in-ring ability of this guy i mean i i know he's had a long time to kind of do this and just because he's been an icon from the 80s you know all the way down to the 2000s and he's wrestling now i mean so it's kind of like you know he's had a long time to develop his skill and he really has i mean he really really has he's, his wrestling matches are just phenomenal really really phenomenal matches like um some of his later ones especially just such a good in-ring worker and for a big man moves amazingly um but uh yeah there's not much to say about the undertaker i mean he's a great he, he's a great guy as well uh, obviously in the in the back but um, that's not something that I'm taking into account whether they're good guys in the back or not. It doesn't mean that to me. Um, but um, I just think, uh, in the end, um, the Undertaker. I don't know what to say about him. I, I mean, he's never been the guy. Um, the company's never run with him that much as champion. But he's more like. Um, and a, tr a special attraction, you know, a real special attraction. Um, and uh, I, th I think he works well as that. I think, um, you know, people, everyone respects The Undertaker, I think. I, I, I've, no, I've never really heard a bad word against The Undertaker. Um, so, yeah, I think um, he is well deserving of being on this list. Um, and then we're going to do the top five. We're down to the top five um, in the next video. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed um, the countdown so far of the top 50.